Hey everyone, it's Sleepy Reader, uh, in the backyard of my in-laws, uh, killing time, so I thought I would talk about uh, four of the indie books that I've read this week. And um, I started out really excited to read a bunch of indie books, but I didn't end up liking most of these enough to keep them on my pull list. Only one of them is staying on my pull list. For starters, there's Helheim, which I was really excited about, but it's the first issue I really enjoyed, but I was really looking forward to learning more about this world, and I didn't feel like I learned anything more with issue two, and in fact the whole, or almost all the issue was a battle scene, or a fight, a series of fights, but with the, the bad guys, I don't even know what they are, uh, some kind of raiding force. I, I don't know if they're zombies or cannibals or something else. Um, I have the vague sense that there's two witches battling. and I, Is he called Helheim? I don't think so. Uh, the zombie, the zombie uh, Viking, whose name originally was... I've lost it. Rickard. So the, 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 uh, the Franken-Rickard, the Franken-Viking... Uh, this is a cool cover, actually, and the art has lots of cool touches. I, I love the way Gillette Jolie does the Viking faces and, and the like. But she kind of falls down, in my opinion, on the action. Um, so there's long fight scenes, but each individual picture doesn't connect well to the next. And in a lot of pictures, I can't tell... You know, is I guess he's really kicking butt in the battle, but I can't tell where everybody is and how it's all handled and everything. And it seems like that would be really important <laughs> to a story like this, particularly when not much else happens in the issue but the fighting. They really don't give us a whole lot more information. Rickard, the Franken Rickard, apparently can talk. He apparently can think somewhat, but he seems to just be single-minded, I guess. I don't know. I just find myself guessing too much for a second issue. And um, it costs four bucks. Also, um, you just get it, you know, I guess I'm getting a reputation for talking about coloring a lot or too much. But um, the coloring's nice, you know, taken on its own. But page after page of kind of the same tones the pale sky, the pale skin. So I feel like I'm, I have to drop this. Um, I can always pick it up, but I've taken it off my pull list. I've also taken East of West off of my pull list. And this is a bigger disappointment. I really wanted to like this. I kind of enjoyed the first issue, but with reservations. Um, because it had cool ideas and beautiful imagery, but not not much to sink my teeth into character-wise. And here we do have a deepening of the bad guys, I guess, um, if we have any good guys. And we have a, a world that's apparently on the verge of destruction, and all the political leaders of all the nations are working with the... Apo uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse or the three horsemen of the apocalypse that are at work um, to bring about the end of the world or what is there about this world that I should feel bad about it ending or even feel good about it ending um, it's just about destruction without any anything else uh, and I would enjoy a good story of destruction if I was made to care about things but I don't think I want to invest my, my precious time and my semi-precious money into uh, waiting to find out if they're going to make me care after two issues. I think I'm out of here. You can always, everything in comics these days, you can always go back and read it later. So, but I took it off my pull list. It strikes me as kind of a, almost a dumb story. I mean, hey, we've got the four horsemen of apocalypse they're going to destroy everything and a bunch of corrupt politicians are going to help them and that's it it's the future and 
we're going to put in quotes talking about how um, we did this. We did it with open eyes and with willing hands. We broke it and there is no putting it back together. Who's we? What is it? What's broken? Um, we don't know enough. So, uh, and it doesn't feel like there's even enough here to be a real world to be broken. Um, so, so yeah, the East of West is the big disappointment for me. Less disappointing, but probably just not good enough to invest my time in, is Jupiter's Legacy. It's got art by Frank Quietly, which can be quite cool, quite compelling. Uh, marred quite a bit by some very dark um, coloring that just kind of makes it hard to actually enjoy Quietly's art on many of the pages or to fully get a sense of it, a feel of it. It's like it's weighed down by this murk of color. Um, so there I go ranting about color again. This colorist is Peter Doherty and maybe this is what Frank quietly wanted him to do in these scenes. Uh, but I, I felt sort of pushed away from the art by the coloring. Um, the story about two generations of superheroes and how the second generation is kind of like spoiled brat Paris Hilton type of characters who don't really want to be superheroes but kind of live off of the limelight is quite interesting and actually the whole backstory of the older superheroes is very interesting and I kind of most of all want to know what's going to happen with that. Um, so I might end up picking this up but I think what I should do is wait for the trade. Uh, just because then I'll get the whole story. <laughs> I think I'm going to feel impatient particularly as this is supposed to be bi-monthly um, and both of these creators are known to not make their deadlines. I also wonder if Mark Millar will keep all the balls in the air or whether as he has in some books he'll just sort of give up and do something pat and easy. I'm kind of guessing, I kind of imagine something bad will happen to all the all the older generation of the heroes and then the younger generation will have to do something. Um, that would be the obvious kind of plot here. If there's some other kind of plot that would be really nice. I mean I would like that plot I just mentioned. If there's some other plot that would be nice. It would be fun to have some unexpected twist in this kind of story. And I am, as I said, I'm definitely looking forward to knowing more about where the powers come from and and how this world developed. Kind of, you know, like with The Watchmen, where you start in a corrupted present and then perhaps you learn more about the once idealistic past. <clears throat> I don't know, uh, maybe in future issues the coloring will, will be less distracting and less um, blotting out the art. Uh, another thing is the younger generation so far are not sympathetic. You know, will Millar think it's good enough just to make them a decadent bunch of spoiled brats, or is there some side to them that that we can care about? Uh, it's a it's an interesting, intriguing book, but not enough to keep on my pull. Good for a trade, I think. The one that I had unreserved love for was Clone, which is much less hyped, much less well-known. Um, the art by Juan Jose Ripe and by the colorist uh, Andy Troy was excellent, great. Not only, you know, you can see it's very sort of detailed, um, almost a slightly ugly style, if, if you will. Um, and there's lots of sort of violent, ugly action in it, too, but... There's, there's great storytelling. You could follow every panel, every action makes complete sense um, and pulls you further along the story. And the story itself of this kind of small army of clones that have been created and now the government is trying to destroy is very compelling, edge of your seat. It's, it's been that way from the beginning, but it's even more so now um, with our main hero of the war the clone who may be the, the real original one whose wife 
has been kidnapped by the evil government scientists and has delivered her baby. And the anxiety level and the tension and the suspense and all the different forces coming together, you know, make this an excellent read. Um, it'll make a great read in trade, and the trade first trade must be just about to come out. Um, but it's also it's a great read in single issues where you can't wait for the next issue, and that makes something to look forward to every month. So that's in the end. I'm getting less, getting less independent books for the moment. I'll hopefully find more independent books I like. I just added some more DC books to my pull list. I, mean, I had been cutting some DC books, but I'm adding Batwoman, I mean, yeah, Batgirl, and Supergirl, and oh, I forgot what other one. And I'm really looking forward to reading the DC books and and one Marvel book that I picked up this week. I, I read the indie ones first. So I hope to have time tonight to read some more. Um, and I will talk to you guys some more. Bye-bye.